Hey, welcome back to Clean Cut, where we can talk about the truth about just about anything, as long as we use logic and common sense. This season, we'll be discussing the sacraments of the Catholic Church, and today we're discussing what kinds of things can make the sacrament of reconciliation invalid or ineffective. There are really five things that can nullify the sacrament's effectiveness. 1. If the confessor isn't sorry for one or more of their sins, they won't be forgiven either. If for any reason you go to confession to try to convince the priest that your sins were sensible or not something you need to feel sorry for, you shouldn't go, because that's the wrong attitude. You need to be sincerely sorry for your sins in order for the sacrament to have its proper effect of wiping them all away. 2. If you're not willing to do the penance that the priest gives you in order to make amends for your sins, that's a sign of insincerity, especially considering how light most penances are these days. Therefore, the sacrament wouldn't have its proper effect. 3. You must confess all of the mortal sins that you can remember, doing your best to outline what each sin was, and if possible, how many times you committed it. Now, some people on the internet have gotten this wrong, stating that you must confess all of your sins fully, in kind and number. This is often not possible, particularly for someone who's had a reconversion after years of unbelief, as I once did. Human memory is incredibly limited, and we often can't remember every last mortal sin we ought to confess. However, if we can't do something, it would be incorrect to say that we should do it, since, as we say in philosophy, should implies can. Therefore, while you should confess what you remember, you are not required to confess sins that you don't remember, obviously. 4. The priest hearing confessions needs to be validly ordained, and the person confessing needs to be a baptized Catholic. 5. In most cases, the priest hearing confessions needs to have the consent of the local bishop in order to allow him to forgive sins. The bishop's consent doesn't need to be given for each confession, of course, but so long as the priest can look to the bishop for the authority to forgive sins, and the bishop doesn't say no, consent can be supposed, unless, of course, the priest is excommunicated, in which case they can only hear the confessions of someone who's in danger of death. However, there are some exceptions to this rule. For one thing, if you've made a mistake or been tricked and thought that the person you were confessing to was a priest in good standing with the local bishop, the sacrament is still valid. It goes further than that, though. According to the terms of Canon 144 in the Catholic Church's Code of Canon Law, if a person could reasonably be tricked into thinking that the person they were confessing to was a priest in good standing with the local bishop, and they weren't, even if you weren't actually tricked, the sacrament is still valid. A confusing, huh? Finally, if the priest is validly ordained, but not in union with the Catholic bishops, such as the Orthodox Church, they're able to hear confessions if they're in proper standing with their own order, such as their bishops or patriarchs. Those are the only things that can make the Sacrament of Reconciliation invalid or ineffectual, as far as I've been able to tell. Catholics are urged to go to confession on a regular basis, and required to go at least once a year, usually in preparation for Easter. However, it's often necessary to go more often since you can't receive communion worthily in the sacrament of the Eucharist if you still have mortal sins on your soul. The only time when this formula really changes is when the person confessing has committed such a grave sin that it incurred automatic excommunication. Due to the widespread apostasy in the world today, these sins are becoming more and more frequent, but every time the priest hears about such a sin, he needs specific permission from his superiors, often the Vatican, in order to lift the excommunication and forgive the sin. One final word about reconciliation. Obviously, it can be hard for a person to voice their mortal sins to a priest, but once they've done so, the priest is absolutely forbidden from divulging them to anyone else. Whether or not he knows who you are, another advantage to the whispering in the confessional box. This is called the seal of the confessional. Any priest who breaks this seal, for any reason, commits a grave sin. Next time, how do we know that reconciliation is a true sacrament? That's all for now, so keep asking questions, and thanks for watching.